Hello viewers, today I am going to discuss about what are the 10 steps to diagnose convergence insufficiency. Now we know that when an object comes close to us, our eyes tend to converge in order to get a single visual perception of that particular object. So what happens in convergence insufficiency? It is one of the binocular vision anomalies wherein the patient is not able to converge as much as required. So in order to validate the presence of this anomaly, the first test that we perform is the cover test. When we perform the cover test in presence of convergence insufficiency, we see that either the patient is orthophoric at distance and exophoric at near or the patient is exophoric in both distance and near but the near exophoria is more than the distance one. Now the next test to perform is the prism bar cover test to evaluate the degree of exodeviation. Now as I already have said before that in case of convergence insufficiency the near exophoria is more than that of the distance. Now the normative value is that for distance it should be one diopter exophoria with a standard deviation of plus minus 2 and for near it should be 3 diopter exophoria with a standard deviation of plus minus 2. But in case of convergence insufficiency you may get a reading like this like what I have given here as an example that for distance it may be 2 prism diopter basin and for near it may be 10 prism diopter basin. So this kind of reading gives us a hint that the patient may have convergence insufficiency. Now the third test is the AC by A ratio. You can either use heterophoric method or gradient method to calculate this value as per your choice. Now because the PBCT has already been performed before so we already have the measurement of the exodeviation of the patient for both distance and near and with that we can also measure the IPD of the patient so therefore heterophoric method can definitely be used for calculating AC by A but according to my experience gradient method uh, takes much lesser time than that of uh, heterophoric method. Uh, now in case of convergence insufficiency the AC by A ratio is always less than the normal value. The normative value is 4 to 7 is to 1. Now here the example that I have given here the value has been calculated with the help of gradient method only and the value has come 2 is to 1. So this also is an indicative of the presence of convergence insufficiency. In case of divergence insufficiency also we get less AC by A ratio. Now the fourth one is a very common test that is the NPC test near point of convergence which can be performed by either using an accommodative target like a pen, pencil or a RAF ruler or we can also use a red green glass and a pen light to evaluate NPC which is called PLRG in short. But I would suggest to perform both the tests with the patient because often I have seen in patient with convergence insufficiency showing normal value with the accommodative target but when PLRG was performed the patient showed receded values in both break and recovery. Now this happens because this red and green color dissociates the fusion of the patient. As a result what happens the value that we get is the exact value of NPC. So I would suggest to perform both but in typical convergence insufficiency cases we get receded values with both the tests whether we use an accommodative target or we use PLRG but PLRG will always show more value than that of the uh, NPC value with the accommodative target. So here the example that I have shown here is that with an accommodative target the reading came 13 centimeter break and 18 centimeter recovery and with PLRG it came 16 centimeter break and 22 centimeter recovery which is quite receded whereas the normal value is 3 centimeter break and 5 centimeter recovery with a standard deviation of plus minus 5. So this is a very very important test which tells us or which confirms the presence of convergence insufficiency. Now the fifth test is the positive fusional vergence amplitude test or the PFV test which means convergence and this test is performed to see the maximum capability of the patient to converge with the help of base out prism bar because base out prism stimulates convergence as you can see in the picture given here where the base out prisms have been kept before the eyes of the patient to stimulate convergence. But in case of convergence insufficiency the patient will definitely not be able to converge 
charge as much as required even though stimulated with the base out present so therefore the value goes much below than that of the normal value like here the example that i have shown that for distance when pav was performed there was no blur the break point was at 4 and the recovery was 2 whereas for near the PAV was uh, the blur point was at 2 and uh, the break point was um, 8 prism diopter base out and the recovery point was at 4 prism diopter base out which are quite low than that of the normal values given. The normal value for PAV at distance is 11 with a standard deviation of plus minus 5 as the break point and the recovery point is 7 prism diopter base out with a plus minus 2 standard deviation and for near the PAV is having a break point of 19 prism diopter base out with a standard deviation of plus minus 9 and the recovery point is at 14 prism diopter base out with a standard deviation of plus minus 7. Now these values may vary a little from literature to literature but I have collected these values from Shiman and Week. The sixth test is the Virgin's facility test wherein we see that how quickly the patient is able to converge and diverge through the uh, base out and the basin prism as given in the virgin's flipper. I have already explained in details about virgin's facility test in my previous presentation. You may please refer to that presentation to get a clear idea about this test. In case of convergence insufficiency, the virgin's facility reading goes below 8 cycles per minute and the patient specifically faces difficulty while fusing through the base out prism because as I said already that base out prism stimulates convergence so if the convergence of the patient is already weak then the patient will obviously have problem while fusing through the base out when the patient flips from the basin to the base out prism now here the example that I have given is that the uh, when um, a particular patient has been tested with the virgin's flipper of 3 prism diopter basin and 12 prism diopter base out and the reading came as 2.5 cycles per minute and the patient had difficulty with the base out prism. So this is a typical case of convergence insufficiency. Now the seventh test is the NRA test or the negative relative accommodation test. Whatever tests I have mentioned before this like the cover test, PBCT, Virgin's facility test, NPC, PAV test, these are all the direct tests to assess the presence of convergence insufficiency. Now I am going to explain you about the indirect test to understand the presence of convergence insufficiency. So in case of NRA test what happens, NRA is an indirect test. So in NRA what do we see? The maximum capability of the patient to relax his accommodation and we do that by adding the plus lens in front of the patient's best visual correction until he notices the first sustained blur. Now in case of convergence insufficiency, the NRA value goes below the normal value. Why? Because we know that the plus lens consists of base to base prism. Now when we are putting two plus lenses in front of the two eyes, then with respect to the uh, light rays coming from the target and passing through the lens and going to the eyes, the plus lenses in front of the two eyes start acting like a base out prism, a pair of base out prisms. Now we know that base out prism stimulates convergence. Now if the patient is already weak in convergence, then automatically what happens? The NRA value goes below the normal value. So the normal NRA value is plus 2.5 diopter. Here in the example, I have shown that the NRA value has come to plus 1.5. So which uh, indicates that convergence insufficiency may be present in the patient. Otherwise, if the patient is uh, suffering from accommodative insufficiency also, then also we get low NRA value. Now the next indirect assessment is the monocular estimation method or the NVM retinoscopy. We also call it dynamic retinoscopy. Usually we perform this test in order to find out the presence of any lead or lag of accommodation in a patient. But other than any accommodative anomalies, we can also assess the presence of convergence anomalies in the patient. Now, in case of convergence insufficiency, we usually get a lead of accommodation with the MEM retinoscopy. Now, why do we get a lead? What is a lead of accommodation? Lead of accommodation is where the reading is coming below 
plus 0.25 usually the normal value ranges from plus 0.25 to plus 0.75 diopter now if the value comes below plus 0.25 that is towards the negative side then we call it a lead of accommodation that means where the patient is actually using more accommodation and if the value is more than plus 0.75 then that is the lag of accommodation in case of convergence insufficiency what happens when the patient is looking at that mem card that time what happens the positive fusional convergence is weak okay because we already have uh, performed that direct test that pfv value we have seen that it comes low in case of convergence insufficiency so what happens is because the fusional vergence is coming low as a result the patient will try to accommodate in order to make the target clear now we know that along with accommodation the convergence also takes place so that means here the accommodative convergence is coming into play so because of that excessive accommodation that the patient is using to make the target clear we get the reading towards the negative side which is below plus 0.25 that means we get a lead of accommodation so always remember that in case of convergence insufficiency if you do the mem retinoscopy test you get a lead of accommodation the next is the mf test that is a monocular accommodative facility test in the presence of convergence insufficiency you will usually get a normal value only in this test because uh, this test is performed monocularly and when it is a monocular phenomena then uh, the accommodation is only playing the most important role than the convergence so usually the normative value for mf with a flipper of plus minus 2 diopter will be 10 cycles per minute with a standard deviation of plus minus 2 uh, but one of my patients i performed this test with one of my patients with this plus minus 2 diopter flipper so there i got the mf for uh, each eye was 8 cycles per minute and the patient was facing difficulty with the plus lens okay from the minus when he was flipping to plus he was having difficulty in uh, in making the target clear that was because the patient was having an associated accommodative excess okay so if there is an associated accommodative excess with convergence insufficiency then the monocular accommodative facility will come low and the patient will have difficulty with the plus lens the last test and the tenth one is the binocular accommodative facility test now one thing you have to notice that all the indirect tests that i have mentioned so far from starting from nra to then uh, mem retinoscopy then monocular accommodative facility binocular accommodative facility all these tests are called indirect tests because these tests are preliminary for uh, uh, preliminary done for for the evaluation of any accommodative anomalies in the patient but because we know that convergence is an associated phenomena with accommodation that's why by performing these tests we can also get an idea of the presence of convergence insufficiency or you can say that we can also diagnose if there is any accommodative anomalies present along with convergence insufficiency because we are already uh, getting the proof of the presence of convergence insufficiency from the direct tests from there already we have made 90 percent of our diagnosis regarding convergence insufficiency along with that if there is any accommodative disorder also then that we can assess with the help of these tests as well so therefore these are indirect tests to uh, to convergence insufficiency now here the example that i have mentioned is that same patient is about that same patient that i have mentioned earlier so his mf value was eight, eight cycles per minute with each eye and because he was having an associated accommodative excess so he was having problem with the plus lens and the uh, the facility reading was also low monocularly and binocularly also it was low because he was having convergence insufficiency along with that he is also having a accommodative excess problem so as a result his binocular facility reading was also much lower than the normal the normal value with a plus minus 2 diopter flipper is 8 cycles per minute and this patient because of the presence of a cumulative excess was facing problem with the plus lens okay so hope uh, i could give you a clear idea about this uh, about the different tests to diagnose the presence of convergence insufficiency because convergence insufficiency is one of the most common binocular vision anomalies which almost we get 
uh, in our day-to-day -day, uh, practice okay very frequently we get patients of convergence insufficiency so therefore we should be aware with all these uh, steps to diagnose uh, this convergence insufficiency so that we can proceed with the exact treatment because only diagnosing convergence insufficiency is not enough as we know that accommodation convergence these are associated phenomena okay they take place together so therefore we also have to find out if there is any accommodative anomaly as well so for which we have to perform the indirect tests too okay so hope i could uh, make the idea about this uh, various tests of convergence insufficiency clear to you if you have any related relevant questions then you may please come up with that in the comment section i'll definitely revert to you as early as possible if you like this video then please share and subscribe and uh, please stay tuned for more useful videos that i'll be coming up very soon till then take care